Auto sequence start in five, four, three, two, one. Well, hello there. Welcome, my fellow impulsive individuals, to another installment of Canned Conversation. My name is Andrew, and with me, as always, is my good friend, Stephen. What's going on, man? <laughs> Tell me, my friend, do you prefer the diving board or the slide as your preferred method of jumping into the deep end of the pool? Ooh, I'm going to go with diving board. Ah, good answer. I'm going to give you a... Do I get points for that? Yes. If people are playing at home, it, <laughs> diving board's correct. I know, right? It's it's so much more fun. You just get so much... It's freedom. Yes. A slide forces you into a narrow path that always dumps you in the same place. Exactly. While they're fun, don't get us wrong. Yeah. Uh, I just... The diving board is, has That's so a, much yeah, more there's opportunity a, there's for There's a very flavor. good path of how that like affects your life too, right? Like you're going, do you want to be on the slide that always dumps you in the same place? Or you want to have the risk of ultimate failure and belly flop, <laughs> but also have ultimate creative yes. freedom to do whatever you want. Agreed. It's uh, it's like life, yeah. right? Is yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, it's 100% like life. And that's why I asked the question. I love it. Maybe. You are deep. <laughs> We're already deep, and we haven't even got to uh, the special guest of our show. Exactly. We haven't even opened the can. Well, speaking of that, as is our passion, one of us brings a new, unique, or rare canned beverage to try on this here show of ours. And while we upload its contents into our gullets, we will attempt to dazzle you with our most intuitive hot takes on life and the world around us. Today's being about how much you trust your gut. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Later in the show, we'll review and rate the canned beverage that we are trying and let you know if you should try it while declassifying top secret work documents to take home with you while being fired. Uh, that's in the news. It is? <laughs> <laughs> I had no you should, idea. You shouldn't, if anybody's wondering. <laughs> don't, don't do that. I shouldn't, I shouldn't declassify the documents while no. getting fired? No, you shouldn't okay. take them home. Okay. Well, that'll be interesting. I might look up the news because that's amazing that I landed you, on that yeah, particular. Yeah, agree. That's okay. it's coincidence. I don't know about you, but I need a can. Yeah. All right. So it. let's do this. Ninja intuition tells me this. Oh, you do not have ninja intuition. You do not even have normal intuition. <laughs> I'd call that one a deep cut. That sounds like it's off Kung Fu Panda or something. Am I close? What's that off of? It is uh, Beverly Hills Ninja. I was close. Kung Fu Panda, <laughs> Beverly Hills Chris Ninja. Chris Farley. Okay. Uh, on the cover, doing this, like jumping and doing the splits. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Never mind. That's, yeah, that makes total sense now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hopefully apropos to our uh, topic today. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so what did you bring us? So I brought um, a can that I could not pass. Didn't matter what the flavor was. I'm not going to lie to you. I saw the can. Um, I went to that. I, I've talked about it a little bit, but um, the the beer sauce shop place that um, those people were super helpful. But um, it says studio sessions on it and it has a microphone. I'm like, this is what we do, man. This is perfect for the podcast. So um, it's this cool little can, it's a little red can with a, a microphone on. It's called Studio Sessions. Um, I I did tell I will tell you that I didn't. I made it all the way up to the counter and almost paid for it before I realized that it's a very small print. And <laughs> on the far right of Sessions, um, it does say um, Indian Pale Ale. So it is an IPA. We don't do a lot of those on the show because we've done some in the past, and we're not super fans of IPAs because our refined palate doesn't allow us to appreciate them. Apparently, yes. however. I bought this one because I love the can and I want it. I wanted the can 100%. So yes. I bought it and I'm like, I'm bringing it and we're going to do an IPA. Beautiful can. Uh, not to correct you, but I don't know if that's the preferred nomenclature as it is an India pale ale. Oh, is that what I, what I call it? Indian pale ale. But uh, if you're in, in India right. and you're an Indian, you're right. probably it's, it's enjoying a pale, ale. A pale ale. Yeah. Um, they just call it a pale ale there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, like the French people just call them fries. They just call it hops in a can. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Sorry. India pale ale. Holy Moses. It is no, 12 okay. Florida ounces and it is 4% alcohol by volume. And it is made by Alpha Brewing Company in the lovely St. Louis, Missouri. Um, can you read that ch tiny print? I, I couldn't if I had better glasses. And I, can't. I believe it says check, check. 
is this thing on? Um, in, in reference to the studio session and microphone. Um, I, all I read and was then it, has it, some additional... Yeah, uh, all the some, words. Yeah, some words uh, about that being it, on air. That are basically being an eye chart. And then are you yes. talking about what's right under it? And then Because pairings, that's the best part. Yes, and then it has, of course, the pairings and uh, cheeseburger. Yeah. Just straight up. Just yeah. one pairing, it, cheeseburger. Yeah, if you're going to drink this beer, it goes with a <laughs> right. cheeseburger. That's about it. Do right. we have cheeseburgers? Uh, no, not tonight. Oh, damn it. All right. Well, okay. we're opening this thing and uh, we're getting started. And I have to open mine special. Sorry. And for anybody who's watching this on YouTube and can see us, um, I, I open weird beers weird so that I could say the can. Don't pay attention. Um, but we're going to start. This is my my topic tonight. And I wanted to talk about gut feelings. So let's, why, don't we, like, why don't we open that up and then I'll let you have a, a show at it. Okay. Okay. So here's the deal. Um, we, we, these, all of our um, podcasts are usually based on, uh, most of them are based on, life experiences, stuff that's going on in our life. Um, recently, you're about ready to experience part of this. Um, I just did. Um, I sent my youngest off to college. Um, I am now an empty nester. Uh, oh, weird. It's so weird. i um, not going to lie to you. Um, but it, it technically is a chapter in our lives of parenting that's over. It, it kind of. In my head, the way I'm trying to rationalize this is there's a, there's a point in which you're in control or you know a lot about what's going on. Um, and then there is that point in which you kind of send your, your little person out into the world, your young adult out into the world, and then they have to make their way on their own. And, and that you are no longer the one who controls like the communication and, and what they're doing or who they're with or what time they're going to be home and all that kind of stuff. They control it. They tell you when they're going to communicate with you. They tell you what they're going to communicate. Like, I may not hear like my daughter's been gone a week. So she tells me what she wants to tell me, sure, right? Which sure. I have to, at that point, trust that she's all of the right decisions are being made and she's doing things all the ways that I've taught her. I'm going to take all that off the table where, where this topic came from is that everything in my gut for the first couple of days was like, I need to reach out and check on her. I need, like my gut was telling me, I need to make sure she knows about this. Or I need to, I need to make sure she's, she's ready for classes on, on Monday. I need to make sure I need to, I need to, I need to, I need, I just literally just went over it. Like I need to do all this the stuff. The coach in you yeah. was blossoming, the, the but there was nothing there to coach. But, but so the, the parent of me saying, I, I used to have control. Mm -hmm. I used to have the information to be, help you make decisions. Now I don't have any of that information. Um, so there was a, my gut feel was like, you still need to parent. And I had to like figure out how to pull the reins back and go, sure. you're freaking out for no good reason. Your kid's ready for this. Like your young adult has, has grown. This is their chance to, to go out and be an adult in the world and make their own decisions and have their own life and blah, blah, blah. And I go, it's really weird. It's a weird feeling when you go, huh, hmm. my gut's telling me to do one thing, but I know sound logic is telling me I got to back up. I got to back away. <laughs> like I, I don't like it, but I have to, um, sure. and I'm a gut person. So I, this okay. is why this topic came up. Cause I just churned on it for a couple of days and I'm like, uh, like I trust my gut on a lot of things. I've left a company after 24 years on my gut. Like I go, I can't be here anymore. My gut's telling me I got to go. It was probably a dumb decision, threw away a bunch of pension. I get all that. There's a lot of dumb things I've done. Not dumb. There's a lot of things I've done based on gut feel to say, this doesn't feel right to me anymore. I gotta go find something that feels right. Uh, but this one was weird and hard. And like when you stop having to like be a parent and you go, okay, great. I'm now not the controller of your destiny. You're the controller of your destiny. I have to hand that control over and go have a good time and let me know. And like, you let me know when you want to talk about stuff. You let me know when you, when you feel like communicating, you feel like you'd let me know what you want to communicate. Like, I don't, I, yeah, I don't even know what the heck is going on. Like, and that, I have to be okay with that. Like you have to, like all my gut tells me I should ask a bunch of questions. Are you drinking? Are you going out partying? Are, who are you partying with? Are you, when you meet boys, what are you doing? Like all this blah, like, nope, none of that. You cannot say any of that. That is not that time. It, well, but your gut tells you it kind of is. So let me, uh, that was fantastic. So that's the setup that's for a, this whole thing. Yeah. So where, where are you Amazing, at? amazing setup. <laughs> um, a lot of, lot of things to unpack really there. And, uh, Agree. <laughs> um, so, and I'm sure you'll do a great job of unpacking it. Um, honestly, my first inclination of uh, question is to 
um, because you had mentioned that you were giving your daughter all of the advice that you could and preparation for college. Did you, um, did you bestow upon her any of your own college experience uh, in that preparation, knowing what you just laid out there? All of the, 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 the detail about um, wanting to potentially uh, parent still. I mean, yeah. how was your college Educate, or how was your college experience when you first went to college, and how do you think your parent? Do your did you did your parents have that same gut feeling I, for I, you? I don't n- know. Um, I was. I think I was a different. For one, we grew up in a different generation. I think maybe our parents handled. I, I don't know about. I'm not going to make assumptions about how your your folks handled things, but like mine didn't have a lot of conversations with me in preparation. We had a lot of conversations about what to expect. Part of it's. This sounds sexist, can't help it. Part of it's having a girl <laughs> right. that I'm sending off to college, sure. and I know what college boys are. So that's fair. I, I mean, I, I don't think that's sexist. I think well, there's just real world. Yeah, I'm just, you just, I feel like sometimes you treat boys different than girls. You shouldn't. You should have the same conversations with boys about going off to college oh, and not being predators or, or like being just about getting right. as many women as you can in your tiny little dorm room. Um, but you know, we had a lot of those conversations, legit a ton over the summer. Like, and we tried to prep and talk and have, you know, talk about some of the things we did in, in college and, and some of the things we saw in college. Um, even if we didn't experience them, some of the things we saw others do. Um, so I think we tried to prep her as, as well as we could through conversation. But some of that is just learned behavior. Like, you don't know it until you don't know what it feels like until you've experienced it in college. I feel like, like, I think she was, when she got to college, she's like, I love it here. <laughs> of course. Which is fantastic. Yes. Right. She's like, I'm making all kinds of friends. I've got all this, like college is a whole different, it's a whole different world, which is part of the beauty of going to a college of, or something, getting out of the house for the first time and going somewhere. It's she's having that experience already in the first week and a half, two weeks. It's perfect. Love it for her. Okay. Um, but we had a lot of conversations. I don't know if they did it any good because I don't think you get it until you experience it. I agree with that a hundred percent. I will just throw this out there that, you know, cause again, I'm in, I'm much in the same boat, right? Our daughters were uh, born just three weeks apart. Um, and so uh, we're definitely in that same space and that they're going off and going away from home. Uh, both of our kids yeah. and we went away from home. Yeah. Um, so I'll say from my own personal experience as a baseline, right. Um, when we went to college, I, in no way, shape or form was about to, uh, let my parents or want my parents to be in parent mode, right. From, yeah. from the perspective of the child, yeah. which you, you don't, not, right. you don't want it. And because you, that's you, that's in your life, that's your stepping stone, right? And yeah. not only is it a milestone for a parent, but for as as, as a, a kid, as a kid yeah. you're like, hey, this is this my is freedom. Me leaving the nest, yeah. right? I've been in this nest for better, for worse. All of what's gone on in this nest for 18 years, and um, guess what? Uh, I am yeah. <laughs> I'm but gone. Everything. So in your folks' case, is the same. You've been a parent for so long. Like it's hard to stop that behavior. Agreed. Like that Agreed. is a behavior I've done for 26 years now. Like it, it's, it's hard to not do that. It's hard to, once you got into the parent mode, you like, that's what you do. You protect your kids right. and you tell them all the stuff they shouldn't do. And, and you keep their schedule and you make sure they're not doing stupid crap with the wrong people and the wrong crowds at the wrong time, blah, blah, blah. Like uh, that's what you're sure. just, that's the rhythm you're in. As Agreed. A Agreed. Okay. Um, I will say that from my parents' perspective, having talked to them, you know, afterwards saying, Hey, uh, you know, when I went off to college, cause we, it's fun to have those conversations later in your life, especially when mm-hmm. you have kids and go, what were your, what was your thought process when I went away? And I know my parents, I had originally signed up to go to college local. So I was going to be here uh, or with them more closely. And I pulled a 180 at the very last minute, right. like the old during switcher, the summer, the old switcheroo, because I knew in my <clears throat> head that I just, I wanted to get out of the nest and uh, this was the way to do it. Um, and so I did and I left and, 
when I, and that, again, generational speaking for communication purposes, it was also a ton different because the only way we could communicate back was via telephone, hardwired telephone in our dorm room. Right. Um, and then long distance was a premium. So you had to have a calling card, uh, or some method of paying for the long distance. So yep. usually like you get a prepaid card that they sell down in the bookstore and it has only so many minutes. So it would be like, all right, here's my twice a week call. I got 20 minutes. All right. Yeah, see, and you go. are <laughs> completely cut off for yes. days at a time. My daughter snaps me every day. Right. Something, right? right? Like she's at the 50 yard line at midnight on the Mizzou campus, right? Or whatever. Like, like I get snaps from her about rant. Like she's like, somebody lost their underwear in the middle of campus today. Snapchat. <laughs> right. um, I'm like, what the hell? So I get, I get constant something or I get at least daily something. We didn't do that when we were no. like, it was, we, I called maybe once or twice a week to say, Same. I, I need money or Things are fine. Things are fine. I need I'm alive. Book. Right. Just a proof of life. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically um, what it was. I'll be coming back for a particular weekend. Yeah. And then I'll I'll get you caught up on where what's happening. Yeah. But we yeah. left them in the dark. And if my phone rang, um, I was mostly not there. Yeah. Right. I mean, we were yeah. off exploring the world uh, yeah. of college, and so mo- not a lot in the dorm rooms unless they called at one o'clock in the morning. I was probably not going to be there. And then I'd probably be sleeping or passed out. <laughs> it wouldn't yeah. be a great conversation anyway. Yeah. So from their perspective, and I'm you know talking with them, uh, you know they talk about well you know when I left they had hope and they had concern. They didn't get to talk to me a lot about it because I sprung it on them at the last minute. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, and and then I think because of the way that it, mm-hmm. it went down, I think that they were just like okay. You, you, it's time. It's time, and you need to go, and you need to make your mistakes. If it's mistakes, you need to make, um, you know, accomplishments if they're accomplishments, yeah. and then please let us know. But they, they even said that as parents, that they were they worried here and there. Uh, yeah. You know, if they didn't hear from me for a week, you know, then it was like. Huh. Huh. And I'd be freaking out <laughs> if I didn't hear my kid right. for a week. Well, especially in this day and age. I mean, right. it pro- if, it, if it went three days, you would probably be driving. Yeah. There, right. And absolutely. There, we'd be like, <laughs> yes. we'd be pounding on her door. In the going, car, ready to go. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, And I think that's natural given the new technology. Yeah. Uh, and does it make you feel any better? I mean, knowing what your college experience is, would you have preferred – this level of communication or do you would you have preferred what your daughter has i don't know because it's funny um we're like hey we're close enough to where she's going to college that we're kind of cognizant of going hey we're not going to be the parents that just come up like and hang out or whatever but she's like hey i need a i need a microwave we didn't know if she'd need one or not she's got a like we're like hey we can come up and and get you get some other stuff like now that you've been there a little bit you probably know what you need um and and my kid's like I'm good. <laughs> Venmo me. Right. So she's like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, and in fact, she actually said, I'm pretty busy. And it, I'm like, I know your class schedule. As a parent, I go, I know your class schedule. You're not, you got like two and a half hour, two hours of class. Like, what are you doing? Anyway, right. but it's like, so my gut goes, hey, you've got time. But I, honestly, I just go, this is your life. You you tell me when you've got time for us right now. Like it's this is a new experience for you. I want you to have that experience, but man, is it is it a different it's a weird thing to go. When can we come when could we come help you? <laughs> like it it's just a whole different mindset. And that mindset sure. shift, even though I was kind of preparing for it, they know oh, it's going to be like it's just like going to college. It's a whole new experience you don't know about it until you get there. This is a whole new experience for parenting of going. You don't know about it until they leave and you go Hey, I guess have you heard from our kid today? And my wife's like, "Yeah, she snapped to me that she's she needs a microwave, but she's too busy to talk to us on th- until like next week, maybe." I'm like, "Okay, great." <laughs> so anyway, it's just it's so weird. We'll schedule a Zoom call. Yeah. So she yeah you know, she FaceTimes us every once in a while and and she checks in like it's it's way more than I my parents ever got from me right like I I call when I needed I money because I had too many speeding tickets or something and I had to pay off a fine, but that was about it. And I'm like, "Hey, I'm coming home this weekend." I. And maybe I didn't tell him that because I was it was close enough. I just drove home. Yeah, there, I mean, like, I did the same. I, I've got a room there. Like it, it's and like I know my parents don't believe me when I say this, but there were times I came into town um, and stayed with friends because of something that was going on back at home, and I didn't tell them I was in town because yeah, I, I'm like I, I don't have enough time 
to visit. Yeah. Uh, and I, I got, I got places to be. That sounds so terrible. Like uh, you, but I mean, you had, you had a g- goings on yeah. and it didn't involve parents, right? Oh like yeah. You, it was the farthest thing from yeah. wanting parents around. Priorities, your, your <laughs> priorities, parents fall way down on that list. Once you've gone away and you're coming back to see people, right? Like, yeah, looking back on it, uh, the the amount of times when I was like talking with them, and I'm tr- and I honestly, we were, the once or twice a week we talked, I would still be in a rush to get off the phone. Yeah, because I'm like, I got I want to go with my buddies do. over here, right? I I'm supposed to go do this activity, and uh, I'm like, all right, all right, I, uh, all right, I got it, okay. Yeah, and then that's what Tay is. She's 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 busy. She got stuff. She's got friends. Right? And like we're going down here, and then we're gonna do this, and we're gonna go to get pizza later and then and then i've got to do a little bit of studying i got i got class tomorrow and i'm probably going to be you know i'm like okay well, well i guess we'll talk to you later um <laughs> i got five minutes anyway so yeah oh yeah it's that still but it's every i can do that we can do that daily back then it was like your parents were getting a once a week phone call and having to live with that yeah so, so i, I think it's a valid point i didn't even think about it from my perspective I just, I didn't think about it from my parents' perspective when I was in college. I, all I thought about was like, huh, I turned this chapter in my life. It's weird because I've always been good about, my gut is pretty good. Like it makes me, whether it's right or not is a whole different story. It makes me feel good to follow it. So like usually yeah. when I follow it, I go, my, my mind is at ease. When I don't follow it, my mind isn't at ease. But right now, like the first five days, my kid was gone. My gut was going, you need to reach out. You need to reach out. Now, I was like having to like mentally calm myself down to go, it's not time to reach out. It's her time to reach out to me when she needs me. It's her time to go do this. And it was just that that ch- chapter of my life that I was struggling to get the page fully turned and go, okay, this is where we're at now. I've moved. I'm, I think I'm good now. But it just, oh, it toiled on me for, I was like, Grr. I had a little, I had a little rough time. My wife's like, things are fine. Everything. We, I, th- I thought she'd be in tears for days. <laughs> I thought she'd be a mess. Wasn't a mess. She's like, I think it's just like she went to camp. Maybe she'll be back. <laughs> right, right. And I'm like, I am struggling. But anyway, so I, that's awesome. Yeah. So, and you're about ready to be I'm in this the position, same, right? I'm, which I, is interesting. I'm the same, I think, as your wife. Um, in that, I. Always had a plan of action with the kids, a long-term plan. I would say play the long game with your kids, right? Your baseline that you can truly parent and you make the biggest difference between like zero and eight. And then your difference starts to sl- slowly yeah, creep it w- down. It wanes pretty, pretty right? quick. As the, uh, as the worlds and their friends and all of the external factors start to play a much bigger role. Mm-hmm. And in their minds, as they develop, they start weighing those all of the different things, not just what you say as a parent, but then they're like, hey, what I know from the world, what my friends tell me, what I see other parents doing, you know, all of that starts to happen. And so, um, you know, I, it was like, all right, really try to instill good decision making, you're going to be responsible for yourself. You're going to have consequences to your actions, and you're going to have to deal with those. Um, I, I know that sounds real rudimentary, oh. but when they get to college, that baseline, it's going to be somewhere in there, right? They're gonna now they're going to dull it with like Bud Lights, right? Yeah. The more Bud Lights they drink, the more that little baseline's probably going to get fuzzy till till it wears off the next morning. But um, but my point is is that somewhere around middle school, you back off the the throttle a little bit and you kind of give them a, 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 a certain amount of parenting when they got to high school. So when my oldest is, uh, went through high school, really almost every year of high school, it felt like a backing off of the throttle to where during senior year, it was a lot of, I'm here for support. And if you ask me questions, because I'll, I'll also preface it with this, mine is very much like me in that yep. I am, I am, I make a decision based on what I think I know and all the external factors. I've already taken that into a, a, account. Um, Rightly so or wrongly. I'm yep. going to, I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm, yeah. And if it's wrong, well, so be it. And you can tell me all day that it's wrong, but guess what? I think you're wrong and I love her to death. So if, if she's right. listening, but you're to basing this, this on your, your, your f- mid forties, you know, she's got, she's only basing this on 18 years of experience. You're basing your, if, if I'm wrong, like, well, I, I did this I, when I was 18. So too, oh, that's what I'm saying. You were probably wrong a lot more oh, back oh, yes, then, yes. right? Like, like right. you yes. at least have some experience behind you. Right. But she is also wrong <laughs> right. a lot, you know, right. A, 
not a lot, but you know, uh, enough, uh, enough. And, but what the, the point is, is I can't, I can't, yeah. when, if I see the wrongness coming and I try to point it out, it does no, it's not no real help. good. Um, so I, so I, every year you stop pointing that out more and more, and then you just let it happen. And then you let the life decision of a mistake, the consequence happen, learn from it. You know, like uh, if something happened, then hopefully you'll learn. And, and, and those steps or missteps along the way, especially the, the mistakes, you learn the most from your mistakes. I, Agreed. I fully hope and believe that. And then when you go to college, hopefully you make less of those based on your learnings. You'll just make other mistakes. Right. <laughs> so, too many Bud Lights. Yeah, oh, man. So um, I want to revisit this whole podcast um, when your youngest goes to school. I would. I think there will be an interesting experience to go. You're empty nesters now, right? True. Um, so I, I'm because I still have to parent. So because I yeah, you still got right. everybody's in the house still, right? So you've got some time. Um, so it's a weird. I, I want to see if you have that same weird feeling. Not to say what I think you're saying is crap. I don't. I just wonder if if it's a if it's me because it's it's the last one out. Where I still like you, you still got another one that you're they're going through the process with. Like there's there's still a true there's still a in in flight product that you're creating. One is about to be not in flight. It's about to be a full full fledged product that's out in the world. Like you still got one that's still in flight. I've got both of mine <laughs> that are still that are now no longer right. in flight. They're both out in, out in the world, and it's a weird like I just I, sounds, maybe it's maybe it's not. This sounds like it's a you it thing may be. where you have this void of uh, because you're a natural coaching type of person. You like to be that for I people. Love that, right? It's so my thing. You had it built in, yeah. And now so I don't. with your kids, you're like, oh my gosh, I made people I can coach. Yeah, and you know who doesn't want coaching is my wife. <laughs> She wants, she wants zero <laughs> coaching from me. Most so. adults don't. Oh. Unless they're at their, you know, like their job and they just right. don't know how to do it. But um, but so you, you know, you you're like, right. well, I need I, someone to coach, so let's make these two. That's why I want to revisit. I'm like, maybe, maybe it's me going, this chapter was harder to turn because I, it was just I wasn't necessarily prepared for it in some way, shape, or form. Although, you know. I think I, I felt like I was trying to prepare for it with this last one. My youngest, I like I feel like she's ready for the world. She's got a good head on her shoulders. She makes good decisions. Yeah, she's I a felt great kid. Pretty confident she was going to be successful. She's been successful so far. It's I know it's only been a week and a half, so let's not get too <laughs> out, out in front of our skis. But um, yeah, so but yeah, I thought I was prepared, and then I'm like the first couple of days, I was like, oh, damn it, I wasn't prepared for this. You haven't gotten a call from campus police. You're winning, right? She's winning. Everyone, things yeah. are going well. Uh, agree, agree to agree. And and so a wise um, a, a wise lady once told me, um, uh, and you know her as well, um, Lynn. So I'm going to mention her name, but you know who I'm talking about probably. So Lynn used to tell me her kids were all in college when my kids were, were little. And she said, ignorance is bliss, Stephen. You're going to learn the less you know, <laughs> yes. the better. And the fact that when they go to college, they only tell you things that they know you're, you're able to handle is the best thing ever. Like she goes, I have to tell my kids to stop sharing so much sometimes. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to know that. I don't want to know that you, you accidentally got too drunk and had to stay at the fraternity house. I sh shut your hole. Don't want to hear it. Like, she's like, yes. the less I know is better once they've moved out. And she goes, so just know that is at some point in your life, you're going to get to a point where you go, I, I don't, I don't even want to know. I, uh, it's all good. You go live your life. <laughs> Tell me what I, I, you think I can handle. I, to this day, there are probably a hundred things that happen in college that I have not told my parents. So let's talk about those right now. Right. Let's list them out one yes. by one well, because I, my mom loves this show <laughs> right. and she loves listening. And, uh, Perfect. Uh, yeah. It, I've tested the waters, right, at, at family get-togethers. Yeah. I've got, you know, we'll kind of bring something up and I'll go, hey, you know, uh, there was this one time and, um, you know, floated out there and, uh, and it, they... I don't get a real good reaction. Like yeah. I don't think they they want to enjoy the story, even though I'm a grown adult right. now, grown a man. Um, and right. you're like, yeah. But I think it still goes back to that. Your parent until yeah. you know you die, uh, and 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 you're just always in, uh, in parent mode. So, you know, I think they don't want to hear necessarily the uh, yeah the, the I, 
gooey stories yeah. uh, of you know of life on campus and and my folks overindulgence. Are, yeah. My folks are both gone. My mom um, has been gone for a while, like sixteen years now. Um, but we did have a couple sessions, my sister and I, I think, with her and kind of enlightened her on some just small p- bits of it. Um, and I think we got the same reaction. I, dad <laughs> never knew, never asked, probably didn't like, I don't know that his brain could, have, he was his, he was an engineer, very mathematical, very logical. I think all of the irrational nonsense that we did in high school, college, I think it would have exploded his head. However, but they were kids too once, I, which is interesting. Yeah, because- but he wasn't, he was not, ne- he was, <laughs> yeah. he was trapping and running a newspaper route at seven, <laughs> yes. right. To earn his college education money to go to college, to get out summa cum laude from an engineering, a really good engineering school and to, to be a engineer. Like, it, oh my God. but I feel like everything's to scale. Um, meaning like in his life, no matter how structured it was and how good or straight and narrow he was, there was something that he did Probably that yes. he would have gone, Oh, I really tested the boundary on that yeah. one. And <laughs> right. you know, I didn't show up for my paper route and then, yeah. you know, slept in. Woo-hoo! I <laughs> like, didn't skin those you know, muskrats right off the bat. I let them sit and rot for a while. No, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it was more likely he probably shot an illegal duck and didn't tell anybody. He's like, oh, God, I buried right. it. No one caught me. Right. Um, so hopefully he's told those before he passed, he was telling those stories about, yeah, we, uh, we accidentally shot it and it was totally by accident. Never on purpose. It was never like we, I did weird stuff on purpose, but then it was like, then it gets like dark, like, Oh, we did this and now we could be in trouble. Yeah. He's still worried. He's probably still worried about in his grave (laughs) that he's the conservation agent's going to come get him. They're going to take my gun and my license. I'm never going to hunt again. Right. (laughs) So crazy. Right. Anyway. And you're so, like, yeah, I drank like uh, t- uh, 24 beers in one night and I fell asleep on the uh, porch outside of a house. I didn't know where I was at. Yeah. Uh, and when I woke up, I had to figure out how to get home because Uber wasn't a thing back then. Yeah. You and me, same Z's. Yeah. So I think I had a bottle of Mad Dog <laughs> taped to my hand one night. I fell oh, asleep yeah. in a ditch at some point, like down in, yeah, down in Cape Girardeau. Uh, anyway. So yeah, I don't think that was the same as what he did though. Anywho. So that was, I'm glad we had this little, uh, I think we yeah. ought to revisit again in a, in a few years when when you're at the same place and you tell me if I it was just the coach in me that's that was that was dependent to, like I, I had a codependency and like I need you here to coach okay or if maybe it's it's, it's I'm gonna just, go way out on a limb and say that's that's gonna what's gonna happen but you know who knows I'm just saying yeah so what do you think you want to rate some beers I think it's about that time I think. The audience has been waiting. They're like, oh my gosh, IPA. These guys typically don't like an IPA. So what in the world can they think of it? And Steven has an upside down can because he opens it funny. I do, but it's it's a collector now. Because we only had, is this the one we only had two I, of? I only, yeah, I, they only had two and they're like, I'm not sure we're going to get any more. Yeah. And I'm like, crap. I'm so a little behind two. the scenes, uh, we try yeah. to get more than two so that we can o- open it normally. Yeah. And then Steven will take one home. Again, mentioning your dad, uh, rest in peace. But, yeah. uh, you know, he always collected cans. Yep. I don't know if we've mentioned this before. I don't think so. Um, but uh, he had a extensive uh, beer can in, yeah. collection down in his basement. It was just walls. Yeah, so I grew cans. up with just oh, when we went to the basement to play ping pong. The, all the walls on the hallway down were just from floor to ceiling shelves of beer cans stacked on top of each other. And when you when we were rowdy kids, we played ping pong and slam into the wall. Half of those cans would fall down. And you have to restack them and make sure they didn't <laughs> dent. But he had like yeah. old, really old, cool old cans. Yes. And after the first or like 10 episodes, my sister said, who's been a guest on the show, she said, you're keeping these cans, right? In right. honor of dad, like you're going to have a collect. And I go, oh my God, I'm not. So I started, I went back and found some of the older ones that we did. I'm missing a couple, but now I open them all from the bottom because that's how you make them a yeah, collector. Yeah, so he uses a church key to, to, to poke a hole in the bottom of the can and then drinks it from the bottom or empties the contents, I guess, if, if we have like a one or a two uh, and you have the extra. Yeah, there's been very few I poured out, but I do drink them. <laughs> I've, I've struggled through a couple. So he's yeah. drinking the uh, current beer upside down. How does an upside down studio session rate with you? Uh, so I really pre- had, had pretty low expectations on an IPA. I actually like this beer a lot. I'm, huh. I'm okay with it. There is an, a little IPA taste, but it's not bad. There's a little that little hoppy taste at the end. Not bad beer. I dig it. I'm going to go with a three, which is hella good for an IPA. Nice. Yeah, for an IPA, we're going to give that a woohoo. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's it's not – so I, I had bad expectations. I, just, I, I bought it for the can. I'm like, this is going to be horrible to get through, but we're going to get through it. So I'm going to go with three. 
So um, interestingly enough, I hope it's interesting to those listening. Uh, what I found is that a lot of friends of mine um, have good beers or, uh, you know, beers of different varieties and often they will be IPAs. And if I go over to their house and I bring my own selection of beer and I only bring a certain amount thinking I'm probably only going to have six to eight of the beers that I bring on a bring your own uh, beverage yeah. situation. And then I'll run out and uh, being the good friends that they are, they'll start offering me yeah, beers. They're crap. And off, but it's not crap. It's usually better than sometimes what I bring. Or at least more highfalutin. Yeah. Uh, or it costs more than what you bought. <laughs> right. And um, what I found is that uh, more and more people have given me like IPAs or uh, this last weekend. Um, Sours. Uh, I got a really good amber. Oh, there you go. I'm um, drinking amber. That was, uh, yeah, real full, full flavored. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what's great is I have semi gotten used to uh, IPAs as sort of the finisher in in that mode right, so um, and this i could totally have as my as your uh, 10th 11th and 12th beer of the <laughs> night <laughs> right so like if i bring 10 this is and, and then i run out and my good friends whoever they might be go hey i have some here take these you know you're out so we but i want to keep the night going this yeah. conversation's good have these and the, but they're ipas are you okay yeah, you can crush them I, all day. I'll have these as my... So this is a five for you? Uh, I'm going to go three. Uh, <laughs> I almost wrote five. Because I'm not going to go out and purchase it myself. And I can't not... find them anymore. Oh, well, true. But okay. I meant like if there yeah. was... This is not going to be in your refrigerator. Yeah, if there was an identical drink. IPA that was as good as this. And um, I, the only other IP... So we had the, uh, what, uh, Unicorn versus Ninja, mm -hmm. um, which I think was the highest rated IPA. I may have given that a four. Yeah. Um, and so... Yes. Uh, and even that, you know, like, I, so this, I'm not going to go out and purchase them, but I will definitely have them. Surprisingly And good. drink them. Alpha, It doesn't job. have a ton of the hoppiness, too. Just so for taste purposes, if you're out there wanting to know, should, you know, for how does it, you know, taste, like, and if you said, just doesn't have that real bitter, it's not super bitter. Right. And that, that's, I think, why we yeah, are a, enjoying it. Because, it's a much smoother IPA than yeah. I'm, no, I'm normally yeah. used to. It's There's a little IPA taste to it, but... Mm -hmm. But I don't think you're going to get away from that. Every IPA is going to taste like an IPA. It's just a smoother beer. I yeah. like it. Agreed. Awesome. All right. So um, with vote, with uh, all of that star rating done, um, I have a quiz for you. Yay, a game. I do. People at home can play as well. So if you're listening. I want you to. Yeah. If you're listening at home, play it. Um, are there right answers and wrong answers? or is there this are only, Yes, there are definitely right answers and wrong answers. You have to control your own buzzer oh, dinger. But it's so it's right there. You don't right, mean to turn, turn it around. around. I got yeah. a lot of stuff to do. Green for All good right. answer, red for Okay, so this is I need your gut feel. So your immediate answer. Okay. It's a multiple choice question. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. So you get lost in a desert. Do you move during the day? Move during the night? Or dig a hole and hide yourself in the sand away from the sun. I move during the night. Okay. Winter. <laughs> yeah, nice. for sure. It's cooler right at night. And uh, yeah. the dehydration will uh, be less effective um, yeah. if I tried to move during the day. And if I just dig a hole, I, then I'm not moving anywhere. And I can, I can pretty much just write myself off, right? Yep. So at, at night, temperatures usually drop from 120 degrees in the desert to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll be less likely to reduce, uh, you'll reduce your risk of dehydration. So move at night. All right. Good. All right. You ready? Yes. Yeah, so am I win Am I winning? Is that one point? You have for one point. Okay. You want to keep track of your own? Do you need a pen? I do. Okay, great. Um, all right. So you are now buried in rubble. Your gut feel. Um, do you A- Calm down and wrap your head in a shirt. Two, try to find something to light a fire with. Or three, try to move quickly out of the rubble. Uh, my gut feeling, because this, this is gut feeling, right? Yeah, it's gut feeling. My gut feeling would be to try to move quickly out of the rubble. Seems like a fire would be a bad choice. Fire is a horrible option. <laughs> right? It's so confined in there and smoke would be in, inhalation. Um, wrapping my head in a shirt makes sense for potential debris that might hit it as protection. 
but what is the real difference? The, like the real answer is actually take off your shirt um, and try to wrap your around your face. It will protect you from dust. suffocation of dirt and dust. You dust. sat around my head, and I was picturing like turban style. <laughs> like you know, just around the top. That uh, is a poorly worded answer. Then, yes. Uh, <laughs> if, it, if 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 it was like wear it like a mask, yeah, that would make way more sense to me. You're still not getting credit. I However, um, I, I do get your logic. Okay. All right, man. If you thought of a turban out there too, uh, excuse <laughs> I, yourself on that one because yeah. I did as well. But if if you if no one did, laugh at my uh, goofiness. <laughs> All right. Then. All right. So. I've had this experience recently. Not really. Um, you get approached by a shark. Ha! Okay. In a tux? Yes. <laughs> so you get approached by a shark. Do you uh, turn your back to the shark and start swimming as fast as you can in the opposite direction? Do you mount it and try to tame it? Or do you, <laughs> or do you um, if, it's, it, if it catches up to you, hit it in the eyes or gills? Okay, so my gut instinct would be to punch it in the face, in the eyes, like gouge out eyes, gouge out gills. Um, yeah, turning and running seems like the worst idea imaginable because yeah. while I'm a fantastic swimmer, yeah, I can, <laughs> I in no way am out running a shark. If it has its its uh, meat eater eyes going, yeah. it, I'm I'm dead. Um, and then what was the the second one? So it, it's not you don't think mounting it and trying to tame it is uh, the right, right. answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the, it, now, if I got on his back again, it's poking its eyes out, so it can't hit, right. see me. Um, anything I can shove up a thumb in yeah. as hard as possible to make it so mad. Like I just want something else to be more appealing of yes. food than me. Something to be easier to eat than you are. Yes, I, I agree. Um, yeah. So it's don't try to swim away. You'll look. You'll look like a victim. Like nobody <laughs> wants to look like a victim. Right. Um, so you should move slowly. And if it catches you, you should hit it in the eyeballs and gills because that's its sensitive areas. So you answered well. Excellent. All right. So um, gut feel, if a bull is attacking you, do you run towards it? Do you lie down flat on your back and try to appear small? Or do you freeze and throw your hat or something you have in a different direction? Oh, that's a really good one um, because from what I understand, I'm gonna, so I'll say my gut answer is to freeze and throw my hat because what I think I've heard is in bullfighting, that red, um, it, they don't really, the red is, doesn't matter. That kind of came from a, I don't know, a yeah, long tradition or something. Yeah. But the waving of the flag, they're very uh, into motion. They're, they're movement oriented. Yeah, it's like Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's like uh, uh, the yeah. Jurassic Park where they're like, freeze, don't move. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sweet. you nailed it. So wow. thus, uh, so if a, if a bull is running towards you, do not move. Um, when it is close, throw a hat or something you have, um, article of clothing to the side. It is attracted to movement mm -hmm. and it will try to attack whatever's moving. Which they attack the waving sheet. Right. The, uh, the, the Manador stairs yeah, Manador stands has. straight up and down, doesn't move. All he does is move a sheet. Yeah. Move makes the sense. cape thingy, whatever that is. Yeah. So they, they're attracted to movement, throw something. Right. And then don't move. Now, for all of these where animals are attacking me, I will say my gut feeling. My gut will may empty in my pants. Right. <laughs> if I'm alone with a shark in the ocean, or if I'm getting attacked by a bull, all of these are I followed with change your pants. <laughs> yes. I my guts may empty. Okay. So if a tornado is approaching you, what do you do? Gut feel. It's in the tux. It, you are in a tux. <laughs> Not me. Oh. <laughs> See, no. the shark was in a tux in that scenario. Yeah, it, now the tornado sorry, is it, as the well. The tornado is definitely not. It is not dressed for any, right. any formal gear. Um, do you climb a hill? Do you hide in a hole? Or do you run as fast as you can in the opposite direction? Uh, I'm going to say first gut instinct is hide in a hole. Um, and the reason I think, you know, I've always heard we're in Tornado Alley. So I think it's yeah. a little unfair. I think people in not tornado areas probably might struggle with this one. But um, the higher you get, that's going to be bad. The wind shear and all yeah. that, that'll and debris will hit you. That's the number one killer right in tornado. Yeah, yeah it's getting if, hit by a two by four, impaled or whatever. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if there was no debris aspect, you could be right near a tornado and it wouldn't hurt you too. I mean, 100 mile an hour it's wind. Just it's wind. Just, right. If it's just the stuff pelting you that, that's going 120 yes. miles an hour that's yes. hitting you in the face. That, right. Like a chicken or a cow if you're yeah. out in the field. A, a truck. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. Part of a trailer. That's so they say, yeah, whatever it is. If you're, uh, if you're seeing a tornado and you're on, and you got to get out, 
from your car. Get out of your car. Get into a ditch. Do not get in the overpass. Do not get under a bridge. That is the worst place to go. It'll suck you out. Tunnel. Yeah, it's bad. And also, I've heard that if you see a tornado moving, you don't have to really worry about it because you can see that it's going in a different direction. But if you look at a tornado and it doesn't appear to be moving, it's it's either coming coming right for you or it's going completely in the opposite direction. (laughs) So take heed because 50-50 chance you don't want to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, you're losing the odds on that one, right? Like, <laughs> right. like, well, I think that might be moving away. Yeah, but it's, but it's, getting, it's bigger. getting bigger. It's getting bigger. The cow just flew over. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely correct. You find a ditch or something that you can get down and cover yourself. That's how you handle tornadoes. For those of you who are listening who are not in Tornado Alley, right? Um, do not try to run from it. You are not faster than a tornado. No. So, okay. You're not faster than most of the things on this list so far. Yeah, that is true. So the next one you will be faster than, um, which is uh, bees are attacking you. Do you hide in a cave or a dark place? Do you dive into the water or do you get out and try to go find insecticide as they're chasing you? <laughs> I love these questions because it's so much fun. They're like <laughs> to think of like all of a sudden I'm in the middle of a bee like, mass and I'm like, I need to go find insecticide. I need wasp moment. propellant. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, I think in those three scenarios, if there's water near me, I'm running and jumping into water. Uh, okay. And now if there, now, now that begs the question, this good. insecticide, is it within arm's reach? Cause if it is, then I'm going to grab that first. I mean, what's closer uh, to insecticide or the, so I, w- I would have gotten this one wrong as well. Right. Um, but the, the recommendation to follow your gut feel should say, find a dark place. Um, bees cannot see well in the dark and they lack, um, the lack of light confuses them. When, they're, when they can see you, they're 100% focused on getting you, even if you jump in the water. So if you jump in the water, they're going to stay where you are because they know you're there. Because mm. you have to They'll come just up. just wait. They're going to wait for you. Okay. In most cases. Um, if you try to go find insecticide, more than likely it's not handy enough that where you could do any damage to bees that are swarming around you and stinging you. So... I get. I have also tried to spray wasps while they're trying to come at me. <laughs> I am. I, I'm a fairly deep. No, I'm not even that great of a shot when I hunt. But I am a horrible shot when wasps are trying to sting me. Like I can't. They're they're really hard to hit with that little bitty spray. So let me tell you what's the worst thing in the world are uh, either no CMs oh. or chiggers because I got attacked by those and I didn't even know it yeah. because they're microscopic. Horrible. And it was days later that um, I realized like I got smallpox. I oh. All over by thousands. Yeah, um, yeah. You don't just get one; you get a hundred thousand bites up your legs and everywhere oh yeah. else. It's, yep. por- it's went all the way up to here. Yeah. It was from my chin to my ankles, uh, and it was horrible. And you didn't even see it. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, learn my lesson on that one. My daughter went out for a photo shoot and um, came back, and she's like, I got some bug bites. And then the next day, um, she had them from the back of her thigh rolling up all the way up her side onto her back. And it was just a, it was, she's like, I counted, it was 78 and I can't see them all. Right. And I'm like, oh, it was, it was like a constellation of stars. It was ridiculous. They're the worst. They're bad. Okay. You ready for the next one? I am. All right. So you're in an elevator and it falls, just dumps. Okay. So comes off its moorings. Yeah. It starts, breaks a chain. Yes. And you're, you're plummeting. To the earth. In a tux. In a tux, for sure. Um, do you jump? Try to jump at the end to, like, do that. Um, <laughs> to do that. You know what I mean. Like Everyone the, knows the that jump move at the end. where you're going to time it like you have any idea where how close to the ground you are. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and like you're you, like, you got a three and, and now, now we're going to hit. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you lie down on the floor or do you squeeze up against one wall? All right. My gut instinct says lie on the floor. Get low. Spread out, spread eagle, and uh, look and, and face up um, so that your face doesn't f- flatten. <laughs> so all the force I just <laughs> make you look like a pug. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Woo-hoo. you lie down on the floor so that the force of the impact is evenly distributed across your entire body, mm-hmm. not just your legs. So you want that force to, to you know, right. go into your back and your arms evenly. That diff- diffuses it as much as it can. You, it's you're still screwed. You're in a falling elevator, but still, it's the best option. Lay flat on the floor. Good job. Right. All right. We got one more. Sweet. All right. Eight total. And I've, I've so far I have two wrong of yeah. seven. So I have five right, two wrong. Nice. I think I'm doing well. You're doing well. Okay. So if you fall through the ice, 
Your natural That's instinct. Terrible, terrible situation. Not good. I have fallen through the ice. I thank God I had, have had waiters on. Yes. But yes, um, f- have fallen through the ice. So do you choose the same, um, the same way that you came in and try to get out that way? Do you try to break the ice and move towards the, the closest piece of shore? Or do you take off all of your clothes? because <laughs> like, they're uh, wet now that's this is my wife's answer the answer is <laughs> it's getting hot in yeah, here she went on nelly on this one right <clears throat> um so my my inclination would be to try to find the hole from which i went through um and if i kind of remember correctly um if you let out a little air hopefully you have air like, so you're not under the ice you've oh. just fallen through it under okay. the ice, you're dead. I, I can't. That's not a gut feel. You just got to figure that one out. Okay. This that, is you falling I, through and your head's above the water. Okay. So but you like, you have to make a choice. My arms are maybe on top of the yeah. ice where yeah, the hole you're, was. You're in a hole and you can, okay. your arms can move. Your head's out of the water. Do you go back the way that you came? Do you look for the closest piece of land and try to break ice all the way to that land? Or do you just take off all your clothes and Nelly the whole thing? Uh, okay, I, you know, taking off all your clothes makes some bit of sense um, in that you're getting. But if, am I still in the water? This is you're still in the water. Okay, so I'm in the hole actively. I'm up to my nipples in um, yeah. freezing cold water, uh, and I'm yeah. in the hole. There's your nipples only as the hole, hard as the right, ice, exactly. But which I are, might try to cut. Yeah, you can cut away with right. your nipples all the way to the shore. So my my gut feeling is, if I'm in that situation, I'm going to first try to sort of get out, and I'm going to be probably fruitless because it's ice, and it's just going to be my arms not making. But that's not one of the options. So if that fails, then I'm probably going to look for the closest route to shore, and then start using my arms to try to bash down on the ice break more ice and break more ice to make a path to (laughs) get naked right is that the answer it's never get naked do not get naked wait wait a minute that's a really good answer to a lot of scenarios but not ever in ice (laughs) i would agree okay but there's something about the like the longer you have clothes on right so once you get out you probably should you probably should absolutely um but uh okay so what am i supposed to do the answer is the best way um, the best way out is the way that you came in. Which is falling through it. The I- so I would have to unfall. The ice is strong enough to hold you to get out there. So you should try to go back the exact direction you came from. But I'm in the Re- hole. How do Re- I get out of the hole? Regardless of how close the, I- the, the, the shore is somewhere else, go back towards where you came from, where the ice actually held you, because the ice is strongest there. Okay, so in your question... I get now the answer that they're going with is don't take once I'm out of the hole, don't take the shortest route because that's unproven ice. Trust get the it. ice that you went. Trust the ice that you went. But it I'm saying I'm in the hole. What if I can't get out of the hole? Well, that's not the question. The question is you what direction that. should you go? Once I'm, it, if you would have said once you're out of the ice, like, oh, you can get out of the ice, out of the hole. Now you're on the ice again. Your now best, what do you do? Your best chance is what it's saying is your best chance to get out of the ice is go back to where the ice was strongest, where it held you. If you try to go towards the shore, it may be weak all the way there. You may run out of energy trying to get to shore breaking ice. You're not understanding, I think, where, what in my head, the picture. I, I get it. You were already out of the ice and trying to break. I fell through the hole. Yep, I got it. And now you're. I'm saying, how do I get out? Yep. And I'm saying, I, I what I think you the question was, you sure. Wait, the question is assuming I'm out now. Now what do I do? I'm. And, and you're like, go towards shore. No, if I was out, if I could get out of the hole, I would go back the way I came, and I wouldn't take my clothes off until I got to shore. <laughs> okay. And then I would get naked, and run to the nearest uh, car or. Um, outhouse or something okay i'll I, take it as a no but i just think that the question was uh, an, you know these are scientific questions <laughs> i spent time researching them oh uh, and could you imagine dropping through the ice with a tux on i mean like i cannot that's the worst you know you're i would like, definitely oh. take the shoes off <laughs> yes like i can't Your have loafers yeah i can't have or, uncomfortable shoes on when i'm trying to get out of the ice Exactly. Those things are like those those patent leather shoes or whatever those are, the slicky shoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not getting you anywhere. No. So that's what I got for a quiz. What'd you end up with? Uh, three, well, three out that, of eight. That last one's sort of under protest. I'm I'm not gonna lie. You got, but uh, yeah, I got okay. three wrong out of eight or five so, correct. So you're at five and a half out of eight. So yes. folks that playing at home, 
I'd be interested to see what you got. Hit us up on on socials and uh, let us know how your gut feel would have would have handled those situations and what your score was. Sound fair? Yeah, that sounds great. And if you wonder why I was in a tux in all of those scenarios, it's just because all situations are cool when you're in a tux. Oh, cool. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't you want to be in a tux? I've only had some of the greatest experiences in my life in a tux. I got married in a tux. That was the greatest. How many day of other my life. experiences have you had in a tux? <sighs> How, how long do we got? We've already been on for 55 minutes. Maybe we should save that for another day. I'm going to write that down. Tux, it, tux experience. Okay. I prom- okay. I promise well, sometime we'll do it. Got maybe it. We'll have a, maybe we'll have a, a guest on. We, we, we need a guest. We do need a guest. Um, it's been a little while since we've had a guest. Agreed. Um, if we reach out to, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know where I was going with that. All right. We'll, uh, we'll find a guest out there. Um, if you're interested, uh, hit us a, up. A formal guest. Yeah. And, uh, All right. cool. And we'll see if, uh, we want to bring you on and t- talk about Tuck's experience or anything that you're in- into. Cool. So hit us up on our socials. Tell us what you think about. If you can go find studio session anywhere else, let me know. Cause it was not a bad beer. Um, I kind of dig it. Um, let us know what you think, how you did on the quiz what you've had to go against your gut on. All of those things are fun topics to have discussions on. I will say that um, we've had listeners lately who have had all kinds of fun conversations with me about previous podcasts, and I've enjoyed it immensely. I mean, we've talked about, we talked about the green energy stuff with our, or with my, one of our German listeners and um, like just had all these fun conversations about um, how people perceive the podcast and our thoughts and then how they, how they translate them and, and, and they have their own thoughts. It's pretty cool. So I love yes. that. Let us know, hit us up on socials and give us your thoughts and opinions. We love them. Everyone also has a, a an opinion on the cans that we drink. Um, usually uh, it's not about the can itself because they don't go out necessarily and get them, but you're free to do that and tell us if you think that the can we drink, what your thoughts are. Yeah. Um, but then other people also say, you know, why don't you do this beer? Why don't you do that beer? Um, you do these canned cocktails. Why don't you do this? Well, throw us your suggestions. We've uh, we've incorporated a lot of suggestions into our shows, uh, so keep those coming. We enjoy them. Makes it less hard for us sometimes to yeah. pick stuff out. Also, we're doing live shows on YouTube. Um, yeah. You know, Which we're I love. we're uh, we're taping some of the shows love. like we are right now, um, but then some of them we're doing live so that uh, people can play along at home, and it's been fun. We had a lot of fun last time yeah. doing it. Um, the last two now that we've done. So uh, also as a matter of housekeeping, we are going to have to try to figure out our schedule because my busy time of year on uh, my work is fast approaching and there's at least one week or two weeks I will not be able to uh, to come in the studio. So we might have to uh, uh, tape one or two in advance or something. We'll figure it out. Okay. But we might miss a week. If we do, please don't hold us again against me. Uh, I do have to pay my mortgage. So and this doesn't do it? Not yet. <laughs> it's close, but not quite. Okay. Well, cool. If uh, if anybody's interested in how much money we would need as a sponsorship um, to allow us to quit our jobs and pay our mortgages with yes. this, please hit us up on the socials as well because I'm interested in that yeah, a lot. We'll take all offers. Yeah. Um, we're looking at you, uh, Spotify or yeah. uh, some serious XFL network. No, uh, what XFL. <laughs> serious network. We should get What's into the, the XFL. One, uh, any of those Sirium, satellite XM. networks and yeah. all that stuff. They're not, they don't sponsor us. Audible. They sponsor everyone else but us. Yeah. <laughs> Everything I listen to now has one of their commercials on it. Are we good to go? I think so. I've had a lot of fun. Yep. Thanks, Thanks you. you. I think you should trust your instincts on this one. It's telling you the show is over. We'll see you next time. <laughs>